Good morning. Um, right now, I think I'd like to show you a little bit about how to uh, maintain your sourdough once you get it started. So it's about nine o'clock in the morning. I feed mine uh, the same time every day. Uh, I have a little scale here. I got it on Amazon for about 12 bucks. And I'll zero out my bowl. Okay, now it says zero grams. I want to get 200 grams of my sourdough here. And that's actually 230 grams. So now I need to get a little bit out of there. Now, some people will tell you you have to be right on perfect. Me, I don't go for super precision. Uh, right now it's at 215. We'll take this a little bit more out. 206. For me, that's close enough. So now we're going to set this aside. Now here is going to be my sourdough that I'm going to bake with later today. And we're going to get another 200 grams out. This one's 220, so we'll take a little bit out. 203, that's close enough. So now we'll set that aside. Now, there's still a little bit left in the jar here. We'll zero this out just to see how much. There should be about maybe a little bit less than 200 grams because when I mix mine up, it should be about 600. You lose a little bit in evaporation. And I put a little bit of extra in each one of those. Clean it out the best you can. It says 145, and there's still a little bit left in the jar. That's okay. This will actually be discard. This is gonna get thrown away. We'll put this over here. Now I take my sourdough starter jar, and I take my 200 grams and put it back in. And we're done with this bowl. So now we got both of these are ready to get mixed up. Take another clean bowl, <clears throat> zero it out. Now we're gonna do our flour. This scoop gives me about 100 grams per scoop, a little heaping. So that was 96. That's 199. I have a little more than each one of these, so I'm gonna give it a little extra, 210. That's good enough, right in here. I get another 200. It gave me 108. And there we go, 210, good enough. Bring my starter culture over here. I use this spoon so I don't make too much of a mess. If you try and pour it right out of the bowl into there, it'll fall out the sides more than gets into the jar itself. And once you get enough of it out, you can just get the rest in there. All right, so both of those have the flour in it. Close up my flour and put it away. Okay, now we need 200 grams of filtered or purified water. You don't want chlorine, that's the big thing. So you can't use tap water. I've heard people say that they leave it sit out overnight or they use bottled water. Uh, I'm fortunate I have a uh, water cooler in my uh, kitchen here, so I can take it right out of there and I have filtered water. So here we go, we're gonna go 200 grams. Now, there's a little bit more than, there's like 210 and 210 in both flour and starter in both of those containers. But I like my starter when I use it to be a little thicker. So I'm only gonna put exactly 200 in water.
200. And that goes in the in here. I'm done with this one. And 200 grams in there. All right, so now we got the starter, the flour, and the water, and all of these ready to go. Last thing to do is mix it up. And there's no special trick to it, just mix it up and keep it in the bowl. Right now I'm just trying to get the water to absorb as best as I can because if I try to stir it too vigorously right now, it'll spill more than stir. Okay, so it's starting to come together. Stir it up really good. That looks pretty good right like that. Now, I always take my spatula and use like a knife like this and cut it. Uh, what I'm doing is trying to break up any clumps that might be unseen in the, in the puncture. Okay. That is ready to go. Side. Now this jar here is what people would call their, their mother culture. Um, I don't really bake necessarily out directly out of this jar. Um, every day I feed it and set it aside and I really don't touch it again until the next day when I feed it again. But I use what I take out of it, feed that, and that is what gets used for bread. Now. Some days I'm trying to do more and I might be short on starter and I'll pull out one or 200 grams, but I always make sure that I don't use any more than 200 because that's what I need to feed for the next day. Um, if you do get crazy and you only have 50 grams left, um, you can just keep feeding it again, but it's going to set you back on your, on your bakes a little bit. Okay, this is all nice and stirred up. And I get Clean off my spatula. And I'm going to scrape down the sides as best as I can and clean it. I want to get as much of the starter off of the sides as I can. And I'll tell you why after I get it cleaned up and I get the lid on it. make it nice and level on the bottom and that's done I take a paper towel I just wipe the lip get any excess well, I don't clean this every single time that I feed I do it um, if I'm super neat I'll do it once a week if not I might do it every other day every third day and then you have this rubber band on the side that I keep uh, got this off of a uh, a bunch of us uh, broccoli and what you want to do is just go like this and line it up with where your starter is right now and that'll show you that it's growing now I'll set this over where I like to keep mine right in a little crevice where the refrigerator and the counter meet in a little corner right there it's the warmest area of the kitchen and this will slowly keep rising and by the time I go to bed tonight it'll be probably be up to here and then in the morning when I come down, it'll go down to maybe about here, not quite all the way down. Okay, so that's what that is. Now this, I'll cover and I'll sit right with this. And then later this afternoon, between four and six hours from now, I will use this to make up my bread dough to then bake tomorrow morning. And that's how I take care of my sourdough.